what's going on guys welcome back to the channel welcome back we are back with some sons of anarchy man season three we're beginning today so for sons of anarchy i will be doing double uploads um until we get to the end there's seven seasons well not seven seasons left but five more seasons left in this show and i'm loving it so far and now jumping back in after a month I might not remember all the names I'm gonna be honest with you guys uh, I do remember Jax Clay Opie you know what I'm saying what is it Tibbs and Tiggs um, Tara um, Gemma I think I'm I think that's pretty much everybody I think that's pretty much everybody so um, last season, they went up against some, some nationalists, uh, you know, white nationalists, whatever you want to call them, um, Aryan Nation people. Um, I ran him out of town. His daughter got killed. You know, um, basically, in some way, by mistake, because she was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. But now Gemma is on the run because of that, because... You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't even remember her name. I don't even remember her name. Ugly lady. <laughs> Ugly um, fed lady. Um, you know, from the... Where is, she, where is she from again? What branch? What is it? ATF? I think she was She was ATF, right? Was it ATF? I'm pretty sure it's ATF. If I'm not... Her name is Stahl, right? Stahl, right? Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to re try to remember as much as possible before we jump in. I know, you know, her and Gemma in the house, she killed dude, Scottish dude, son, and now freaking Jackson dude, I in both Scottish Irish dude ran off with Jack's son. This is a problem, a problem that he doesn't want because when people are emotionally driven, they will do crazy shit especially when kids are involved so i know this season is going to be emotional and freaking just you know the the the, the level of hypeness is going to be up there but anyways enough of me talking let's jump into these episodes and i will see you guys for the review All right, so that was Sons of Anarchy, Season 3, Episodes 1 and 2. We are back, back, and watching some Sons of Anarchy. And I have to say, man, felt like I didn't lose a step there with that first episode. Because, I mean, Sons of Anarchy, they're, they're writing and, you know, following a comprehensive story is just, it's top-notch stuff, you know? And I never, like, ever doubted that they would have came back with a bang this season you know it was a really good well fleshed out opening episode there with episode one um you know kind of touching on all the bases um i have to say the most surprising thing that happened um in this session of me watching was the death of deputy chief hale hale was one of my favorite characters in the show because of his character. Because of the character and how the character is written. He's like a very conflicted character. I thought, you know, he was gonna end up in the same position as as um as the chief, right? I thought he was gonna be in the same position where he's like he he's gonna come to an understanding of who Sam Crow is and just let him do their shit and protect Charmin because the police force is not enough. And I understand the need the need for change. Like in, in the context of the show, that's what I would love to see happen. I would love to see Sam Crow don't have to do all this crazy evil stuff to keep people safe. Even though they're running guns like crazy, I want them to stop that. And I think eventually Jax is probably going to try to stop I mean, he's already trying to steer them away from all the gun running, having legitimate business and stuff like that. That's what he did with the with the porn thing. 
and stuff like that. So it's um it's a matter of the the, the way how I see it. You know, the way how I see it going and going forward, I would have loved to see him play a bigger role. You know what I'm saying? Going forward, but oh no, they just kill this character. You know what I'm saying? It's not that he went out in a non meaningful way. I, you know, I just, the casualty that he became, it's, it was just shocking. You get what I'm saying? His head got crushed got hit by a drive-by there was no hint whatsoever that hill would have gotten killed i mean he barely got any lines in the first episode i don't think it was something that they were prepared to do but they went that direction maybe because maybe he wanted to go do something else that was going to pay him more or something of the sort and they decided to just kill his character i don't know i don't know i'm just speculating Either way, if that's the way how it was written and they just came to that decision um, in the first episode of the third season, I mean, that's that's big moves. That's big move. That's taking a chance at a character that you know the audience likes, whether they whether it's a love hate relationship with him. He was a very balanced character. You get what I'm saying? Like there's no. You know, there's no be like, okay, he's good. Okay, he's bad. Okay, he's good. Okay, he's bad. It, it wasn't like that. He was very in the middle of everything. So, you know what I mean? Like, sometimes, you know, you overall, he's a character that's going to do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? He still wants to get rid of Sam Crow, but he also understands what they have to do to protect their own and stuff like that. And, he, he, you know, he was looking forward for things to be better and hoping that they got better. You know what I'm saying? So I'm really I'm, I'm really digging it, man. I'm digging it a lot. You know what I mean? I'm digging it a lot. I'm, I loved how they did the second episode. I love I love that Tara in the first episode actually came back to Jackson and let her, let her know how she feels about the situation. She should have did that the first time around. But, it, but, you know, at the same time, I realized what they were doing. As in the flow of the show, it was good to leave that up in the air and then come back later to it, um, to that scene where she was explaining to him. You know what I mean? And I have no problem with what she said at all because I knew... Jack was just talking out of guilt and stuff like that. A lot of times, as I said before, when men talk to women like that or they tell them stuff like that, they won't, women don't analyze the situation because they're so emotional. They don't analyze the situation and realize what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? It's the man in that situation always wants reassurance. If you give him reassurance, trust me. You know what I'm saying? As long as it's not something that you did, most of the times, you have to look at that situation from a different angle. So most of the times, you know what I mean? Like sometimes I, even in my relationship, sometimes I, you know, will tell my girl certain things and she react the way how I want her to react. In the moment, a lot of times we say things we don't mean. I'm not telling you that I want you to leave and never come back and all of that other stuff. Like a lot of times we say that stuff out of guilt, especially when you're not in the wrong about anything. It could be just something happened. And I just feel like I'm not in the position to protect you. So I'm telling you to just don't be around me because I can't protect you. I don't feel like I can protect you at this moment. And at that moment in time, all I need is a reassurance that you're going to be there for me. And you got to ignore that because, but that's the thing. That's the thing about you and me. If you just get up and leave just because I say you should go and I'm not, it's not out of something that you did, you know, specifically for me to be telling you, I'm not angry at you. I'm just saying, you know, it's just bad to be around me because I don't feel like I can protect you in that moment. You need to stand your ground and be like, I ain't take all this shit and go through all of this for you to be telling me this right now. I'm not going anywhere. That's what a man needs to hear. OK, ladies. So um, in, in, in much circumstances, 
when it comes on to, to this show, it does a very good job of portraying certain things that I expect is, is so much more putting it, putting things in perspective and drawing parallels from real life and just putting it into a story in a well-written story and portraying it on TV. You know what I mean? So, um, in the second episode, we got Gemma, right? We got Gemma, um, you know, trying to get away. She still doesn't know about Abel, but they killed Cameron too. So Cameron, who took Abel, he got killed because of his son working with the feds. He wasn't working with the feds, but him thinking that Gemma killed his son, he took Abel. Now they, the, 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 the council of the IRA, they found out that, oh, you know what I'm saying? You did that for nothing, and you kind of messed up a relationship that we had that we got to have to try to mend now. We've been we've been in business with these people for over 20 years, and you just messed that up by, you know, taking these people, um, taking um, Jax's um, kid, and you just messed that up. And furthermore, they can't trust, they can't trust him because... He, they're saying there's no way he didn't know that his, his son was, you know, cooperating with the feds. So, all in all, you got to go because we can't trust you anymore. So, old Cameron is gone. But I don't like how they're getting chummy with Abel, though. They need to send, they need to send him back. You know what I'm saying? They just need to just... Let Jimmy take him back or, or something of his son and tell them, hey, we've taken care of Cameron. He's not going to be a problem anymore. Blah, blah, blah. End of story. Abel is back in safe arms and we can concentrate on the other threat of the patch over, which is Alvarez from the Mayans. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, man, um, leave a like on the video, leave a comment, and I will catch you guys next time for some more Sons of Anarchy. Peace.